what we're curious about is ourselves, right? And we'd like to know if there are others. And it's an old question. Where is humanity right now in this great search or the answer to this question, are we alone? What has been our progress towards answering that question? What are we on the verge of doing? What are we trying to discover today? And what does the future look like? Living Worlds tries to tell the story of the co-evolution of life and our planet and how that informs our search for life elsewhere. One of the most exciting parts of the production process for me is that initial phase when we're talking to scientists and experts and trying to piece together the story that we want to tell. We talk about whether uh, production is scientifically accurate. They put a lot of effort into making sure that they have the science right. I've spent my life trying to um, look for evidence of someone else's technology on some other worlds. Right? So we call it the search for technosignatures, or SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. My expertise is the detection of exoplanets. So these are planets orbiting other stars in the galaxy. The scientific method requires that we generate hypotheses and then we test those hypotheses. We imagine scatter plots, histograms, correlations, uh, patterns, but translating that to an actual world or a place, that kind of activity of world building is, is very different. And it's not until we hand them off to the artists that that object becomes a destination, becomes something tangible and more real. So it's really wonderful to work with the artists. Our animation team is constantly tweaking what we're doing. We don't necessarily have a hard script or a hard storyboard that we're following because if the science changes, we need to be flexible enough to change with the science. All of the data that you will see in Living Worlds, it comes directly from what researchers are working on right now. There's a lot of hardware in the show and that cutting edge technology is work that is just barely on the drawing board. We have spacecraft that could potentially be snaking down the cracks in the southern pole of Enceladus to look for the signs of life. One of the sequences I got to work on uh, involved collaborating with some scientists and engineers at JPL, NASA. It's a concept called EELS, which stands for Extant Exobiology Life Surveyor. And the idea of this mission is to explore the cold icy moons and to snake down ice crevasse and explore the subsurface oceans in search for possible microbial life. They said that some of the questions that we asked were quite helpful for them to think about the mission. And then we even worked on the, the color scheme for the prototype. In the Mars scene, basically everything you see is based on uh, photography from a couple of different Mars probes. And then we also had to bring in a uh, second set of data to give us color information for this kind of black and white mosaic. Um, we had to bring in an elevation map from another data set to kind of show us what the lay of the land is. And then for the stuff that's very, very close up where we get right down to the ground, we relied on uh, imagery from the high rise probe. We thought that this topic of looking for life elsewhere was a way to think about the longevity of our species and how we can coexist with our planet. The city greeting sequence is an aspirational scene that is based on real data. And the concept was to show a time-lapse animation of the Bay Area changing over the next 100 years to show how we could transform the landscape to mitigate sea level rise, to restore ecosystems, to create more livable urban neighborhoods in harmony with the nature. As we contemplate habitability beyond, we always come back to this question of habitability right here on planet Earth, about our future survivability, about the sustainability of life, um, in particular the sustainability of human life and, and whether or not we can survive to the future.